Okay, so get this right. Today, we're going to uh, deep dive into something that sounds like, I don't know, pure science fiction. Water-powered cars. Oh, yeah. Like, remember those rumors? Filling up your tank with water and driving around, like, no emissions or anything? Yeah, yeah. It's almost too good to be true, right? Right. <laughs> so we're here to sort of, I don't know, separate the facts <laughs> from the uh, from the fiction. We found this SciQuest article that actually lays out some of the tech behind it. But uh, then we've got this MIT engineer, and they responded to a question on Ask an Engineer. And... Uh, well, they're not buying it right. at all. So that's what we're going to look at today. I mean, it is a very appealing idea, especially now when uh, climate change is such a big concern. And energy security and the idea that you could just have this clean, uh, readily available fuel source like water instead of all this, you know, oil and stuff, that's going to be appealing to everybody. Right. Like just pull up to a lake and fill up your tank. Yeah. But this MIT engineer, they call it a pipe dream. So help me out here. Mm -hmm. Where's the disconnect? Well, I think a lot of people, they think, uh, you know, you're actually burning water, like you burn gasoline. Yeah. And uh, that's not what we're talking about yeah. when we talk about these these water-powered cars. Uh, it's all about hydrogen. So are we talking about hydrogen fuel cell cars? Mm -hmm. Those are a real thing, right? <laughs> I've seen some car companies, like, actually selling them. They are real, yep. Uh, and uh, it's a really interesting application of this technology uh, called electrolysis. That's where you take water, you know, good old H2O, and you split it up. You get hydrogen and oxygen. So instead of burning the water, we're breaking it apart to get the hydrogen. Right. But, I mean, that sounds like it takes a lot of energy to do that. It does take energy. Okay. And that's actually uh, where this MIT engineer's uh, skepticism comes in. Because uh, the energy that it takes to split apart those water molecules, it's it's significant. Yeah. And when you use the hydrogen as fuel, you don't actually get all that energy back. You get less back. So it's kind of like, a, I don't know, is it like pushing a boulder uphill and then letting it roll back down? You're never going to get all that energy back. That's a good analogy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So from, from, a, from a thermodynamics perspective, it just doesn't really make sense uh, to use water directly as a as an energy source. So water powered is kind of a misnomer then it seems like, mm -hmm. but the hydrogen itself is like the real, uh, is the real star. Right. And we know that there are cars that run on hydrogen. So what are we missing here? Well, there's uh, a few hurdles with the technology itself. Uh, and SciQuest does a pretty good job of outlining some of them. So uh, first of all, let's talk about production. Where do you think most hydrogen comes from today? Well, if it's not coming directly from water, my guess is something not so green. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Uh, most of the hydrogen we use right now comes from fossil fuels, natural gas specifically. Yeah. Oh. Uh, there's a process called steam methane reforming, <laughs> which is, uh, it is efficient, but obviously it's not really uh, what we're looking for when we talk about, you know, environmentally friendly solutions. Right. So we're kind of stuck in a loop then. We need the hydrogen for clean transportation, but we're using, uh, you know, dirty methods to get it. So that doesn't seem very sustainable. Yeah, it's it's a hurdle. Yeah. So this is where we get to something that both the uh, SciQuest article and this MIT engineer uh, talk about, and that's green hydrogen. OK, green hydrogen. So I'm guessing that means uh, producing it in a cleaner way. Exactly. Uh -huh. uh, green hydrogen is produced using renewable energy sources mm -hmm. like uh, like solar power, mm -hmm. wind power, even hydropower can be used. So the electrolysis process yeah. is powered by renewables. So there's no carbon emissions involved in making it. Uh, so it's a truly clean fuel source. That sounds great. Yeah. But uh, there's got to be a catch, right? I mean, is green hydrogen super expensive to produce? It is. Okay. That is a big challenge. Okay. But uh, there is a lot of research and development focused on bringing the cost down. SciQuest mentions a few uh, different uh, approaches that researchers are working on. Like what? Yeah. What kinds of uh, technologies or breakthroughs could make this uh, make green hydrogen more affordable? Well, one thing is uh, developing electrolyzers that are more efficient. Um, there are these things called solid oxide electrolyzers that operate at high temperatures, so they can actually use waste heat oh, wow. from industrial processes. So that boosts the efficiency and reduces the cost. So it's like recycling energy that would have been lost otherwise. Yeah. Cool. What else? Another thing is uh, catalysts. Okay. Uh, catalysts are uh, special materials that speed up chemical reactions, so you need less energy overall. Imagine uh, putting a turbocharger on the hydrogen production process. Okay, so we're trying to get uh, like more bang for our buck energy-wise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like there's a lot of potential uh, for innovation when it comes to green hydrogen, but we're just not quite there yet. Yeah, that's a good 
Good assessment. Yeah. It's not just about producing the hydrogen, though. Um, it's also about the infrastructure to support it. Right, because even if we can uh, make the green hydrogen in a way that's affordable, mm -hmm. we still got to get it to all the cars. Right. So we need what? like We're talking about building a whole new network of refueling stations, yeah. pipelines, uh, storage facilities. Imagine our gasoline infrastructure. Yeah. That's what we need. That's that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's got to be expensive. It is. It's a big barrier. Okay. So even though these hydrogen fuel cell cars exist and the technology seems really cool, there's still uh, some economic hurdles that we've got to get over. Okay. So that's we're going to pick up in part two. We're going to delve into the economics of it all. Yeah. And see if this technology really has a chance to be a viable solution for, you know, everyday people. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So we're back and we know now that those water powered cars, they're not really about, you know, running on straight up water. It's about hydrogen, uh, but there are still those big challenges. Mm -hmm. We're going to need a whole new, like, gas station system, basically, okay. and the costs. Uh, that's a big one. But before we get too deep into all that, can we just, like, zoom in on the tech itself for a minute? Sure. So we know these hydrogen fuel cell cars, they exist. Mm -hmm. But, like, how do they actually work? What's going on under the hood that makes them different from just a normal electric car? Okay, so imagine this, right? You got this fuel cell. Okay. It's like a, a mini power plant oh, okay. right inside the car. And it takes in hydrogen gas that's stored in these, uh, you know, high pressure tanks. And then uh, it combines that hydrogen with oxygen Why? just from the air. So are we basically like reversing that electrolysis we talked about, like putting the hydrogen and oxygen back together? Yeah, exactly. Okay. But here's the difference. Instead of putting energy in to split them apart, this reaction actually releases energy yeah. In the form of electricity. And the only thing that comes out is water. Yeah, water vapor. Wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. So no, like, harmful exhaust or anything, just just water. Yeah, that's it. Are there any downsides to how the fuel cell itself works? Well, uh, one thing PsyQuest mentions is that um, fuel cells, they use this special membrane. Okay. Uh, it's often made of a material called a uh, nafion. And... This membrane is really important uh, because it conducts protons. Those are like positively charged hydrogen ions. Okay. And that allows the electricity to flow. So it's like a uh, like a gatekeeper or something, letting only the right particles through. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But these membranes, uh, they can be a bit sensitive oh. and they degrade over time. Okay. Which affects how efficient the fuel cell is and how long it lasts. So that's something researchers are working on, trying to find uh, more durable and, and less expensive materials. So like with any new tech, there are those kinks that you got to work out. Right. Okay. Well, let's go back to the hydrogen itself for a second. Um, we talked about how, you know, most hydrogen production, it's actually not very clean. It relies on those fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. But PsyQuest was really pushing this green hydrogen. Right. So what exactly makes it so different? Is that is that the answer? Well, green hydrogen, it's, it's produced using renewable energy sources. Okay. So you're talking about solar, wind, uh, even hydropower. So there's no carbon emissions involved in, in producing it, right. which is, you know, the whole point. So that's great. But the cost, that's the big issue. Mm -hmm. So are researchers doing anything about that? Yeah, there's there's a few things happening. Okay. Uh, remember we talked about those more efficient electrolyzers? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the solid oxide electrolyzers, right. they can actually use waste heat from industrial processes. Oh, right. So that's helping to bring the cost down. Clever. What else? Another focus is uh, better catalysts. A lot of electrolyzers use platinum. Oh, that's got to be expensive. It is expensive. Mm -hmm. So researchers are looking for uh, different materials that are cheaper but still work as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, and there's another uh, interesting approach that's being explored. What's that? Uh, integrating hydrogen production and storage. So what does that mean exactly? So imagine this. You have a device like... Uh, maybe the size of a shipping container. Yeah, okay. And it can produce hydrogen on demand mm -hmm. right there at the fueling station using renewable energy. So you don't need all those uh, big transportation networks and complicated storage solutions. Oh, wow. So you just kind of like plop it down and it makes the hydrogen right there. Yeah, something like that. 
That's amazing. Yeah. So this sounds like there's a lot of cool research happening, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the production side of things. Mm -hmm. But what about the cost of the cars themselves? Right. Yeah. So fuel cell vehicles, they are uh, still a lot more expensive than than gasoline cars. OK. Uh, partly because they're not making that many of them yet. Right. Right. But as demand goes up, the prices should come down, just like what happened with electric vehicles. OK. So economies of scale, that makes sense. Yeah. But even if the cars get cheaper, there's still that whole refueling thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. building out a whole network of hydrogen fueling stations, yeah. that sounds like a huge undertaking. Yeah, it's a big challenge. It's going to require, uh, you know, governments, energy companies, car makers. They all got to work together. Wow. And it's not just about building the stations. It's about making sure you can transport the hydrogen safely and efficiently. Right. And store it. Yeah. Are there any countries that are like doing a good job with this hydrogen infrastructure stuff? Yeah, SciQuest talked about the European Union. Okay. Uh, they've got this ambitious hydrogen strategy, and they're putting a lot of money into uh, not just production, but also distribution and storage. Okay. They want to have uh, a million tons of renewable hydrogen production capacity by 2030. A million tons? That's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. And they want to have hydrogen refueling stations all over Europe. Wow. So they're really going all in. They are. are there any other countries doing big things with hydrogen? Yeah, Japan and South Korea. Yeah, They're both investing a lot in uh, this technology. They see it as uh, an important part of their energy future. They're working on fuel cell vehicles, building the refueling infrastructure, and they're even looking at using hydrogen for uh, power generation. Okay, so there's definitely some momentum building worldwide. Mm. But even with all this, it still feels like it'll be a while before hydrogen cars are like a normal thing. Yeah. So what are the biggest things that need to happen? What are the things that would really make a difference? That's a great question. And that's actually what we're going to talk about in the final part of our deep dive. Okay. So we've looked at the technology. We've talked about the challenges and uh, some of the progress that's being made. Right. But the real question is, will this technology live up to its potential? Will it be something that, you know, regular people can actually use or will it just be a niche thing? OK, so we're back and it's time to talk about the uh, the elephant in the room, like the big question mark for most people. Cost. Absolutely. All this tech, all these challenges, it really boils down to, you know, will it work in the real world for our wallets? And right now, hydrogen fuel cells, not exactly cheap. Yeah. SciQuest, they didn't really hold back. They basically said that for the average person, hydrogen cars, forget it, not an option. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Like, where are all these costs coming from? Well, it's a few things. First, the cars themselves, they're still pretty niche, right? Not many being made. That always drives the price up. Ah, so like those early flat screen TVs, they cost a fortune until everyone started making them. Yeah, exactly. We're kind of paying a premium for being early adopters. But even if the cars get cheaper, there's the fuel itself. Green hydrogen is still way more expensive to make than just plain old gasoline. Right, right. And then all those refueling stations. Mm -hmm. and... That's not going to be cheap either. It's like a chicken and egg thing. Mm -hmm. We need more people wanting hydrogen cars to justify building all that infrastructure. But the high cost is, well, keeping people away. So how do we get out of that loop? That's where government's got to step in. SciQuest talked about the European Union. They've got that hydrogen strategy. And it's pretty bold, like serious funding for research, development, even subsidies for the cars themselves. So kind of kickstart things with some incentives. Exactly. And it's not just throwing money around. They're setting targets for how much hydrogen gets produced, how many refueling stations get built. That tells investors, tells the industry, this is for real. OK, that makes sense. Are other countries doing the same thing, getting involved with hydrogen? Oh, yeah. Japan, South Korea, they're all over it. They see hydrogen as like the energy of the future, research, infrastructure, even using it for power plants. It's becoming a global race. That's pretty wild. OK, so good stuff happening, but it still feels like a long road. Realistically, when could we see hydrogen cars become like the normal thing, something we could actually buy? That is the million dollar question. Tough to say. It depends on so much. Technology, governments, even if people actually want them, you know, but Let's play what if. What if everything starts going right? What are the big game changers for hydrogen? Ooh, I like this game. Yeah. What would have to happen for hydrogen to go from like a weird science project to, I don't know, something that can compete with gasoline cars? Well, first, green hydrogen production costs, they got to plummet. 
Like, imagine it gets as cheap as, or even cheaper than, making gasoline. Whoa. That would be a total shakeup. What about the tech itself? Fuel cells, they gotta get better, more efficient, last longer, cheaper to make. And remember those membranes we talked about? Yeah. Finding new materials for those, that could be huge EE. And of course, we need way more places to fill up. Totally. Range anxiety is a thing with electric cars. Imagine that with hydrogen if you can't find a station. But hey, as more people want the cars, more sedations will get built. It's a process. So it's bigger than just the tech itself. It's got to be a whole system that makes sense for hydrogen. Exactly. Lots of moving parts. But the payoff could be massive. We're talking cleaner transportation and not being so reliant on oil anymore. You know, what's really hit me during this deep dive is this isn't just like myth busting or some futuristic fantasy. This is a real way we could have a more sustainable future. And it's happening right now. Right. It's easy to get lost in all the technical stuff. But at the end of the day, this is about climate change, air pollution, all those big problems. So to everyone listening, keep learning, keep an eye on those breakthroughs. And hey, maybe you'll be filling up your car with something way cleaner than gasoline pretty soon. And maybe, just maybe, those whispers about water-powered cars, they won't sound so crazy after all. Keep exploring. Keep asking questions. That's what it's all about.